look at this gun. Just look at it. You see a gun that looks goofy, possibly even ugly. But I see a gun that's absolutely beautiful. And the difference between you and me is I've shot this gun and you haven't. This gun shoots so well, you'll think the gun is gorgeous. Welcome back to the channel. I'm David and this is the Beretta PX4 Storm as imagined by Ernest Langdon from Langdon Tactical. Now boys, it's not often I come to this screen to you with very strong feelings for a gun, but I have to say that this is the ultimate compromise gun, meaning that it does all the big gun stuff in a little package. It is lightweight, it is easy to carry, it has 15 round capacity, it has co-witness iron sights, red dot capability, but most importantly, it's ridiculously easy easy to shoot well and behaves like a much bigger gun when you actually go shoot it. That thing is amazing. That's unbelievable for just a little gun. Doesn't care, baby. This gun is a cheat code, dude. This is, un oh, this is unreal. Dude, this gun is amazing. The IPA drinkers in the crowd can enjoy their hipster flex because these guns are very difficult to get a hold of. Beretta doesn't import a lot of them and the ones that are brought in usually get snapped up. Before we go any further with that, I do need to shout out my channel sponsors. First and foremost, a thank you to my Patreon supporters who know the difference between the 80s shows that aged well and the ones that just didn't stand up. So thank you again to you guys. To Optics Planet, where code HUMM does absolutely nothing and you shouldn't try it. Finally, the ammo sponsor for this video was Global Ordnance with their Igman ammunition, which got the job done wonderfully. And of course, you, dear viewer, who wants to see the comparison between this and the 92 Langdon Tactical that I have, but you have to subscribe to see when that video drops. So, all right, let's talk about this specific gun because there's a bunch of different flavors and things that are available to be done on the Langdon Tactical website. So, this one does have the full Langdon Tactical trigger job with the NP3 coating on the trigger bar and all of that stuff. It has the stealth decockers and it has the concealed flush hammer that goes on there, but that's about it. It doesn't have all the MP3 coated stuff. It's obviously got his RDO sight cut and the Hollow Sun 508T. As we discussed, the gun is a 15 round capacity with flush fitting mags. There are three mags that come in the box. The nice thing about the gun is it has this nice double action pull that is about eight pounds. And then when you want a shooter's trigger, it has a nice about four pound trigger and the reset is absolutely itty bitty. It's super tiny. The gun absolutely stays planted. But what's important is because this gun has a rotating barrel. Look at the barrel rotate as the slide moves to the rear. This rotating barrel seems to eat up a lot of the energy of recoil. And as a result, this little itty bitty gun doesn't move around a lot when you go shooting it. So the super fast trigger, you can get the most out of because the gun is super duper controllable. And that's for a couple reasons. Number one was the rotating action, but number two, the weird kind of bulldog looking gun, like the ergonomics actually work really well with how that kind of spur that kind of plants your hand under the back of the gun with the trigger guard, you get a gun that absolutely stays planted. And then the trigger reach for double action is basically perfect. It makes it very easy to lock your wrist out in double and then stay locked out when you're going into the single action stuff. So now with it being a carry gun, I'm not exactly sure the round count on the gun at this point it's between six and seven hundred rounds with about seven different types of ammunition they use three different range loads and then four different types of hollow points for testing and what i found out about this gun is the shooter's experience regardless of what load you're putting through it is exactly the same so the hollow points i tried through the gun was 115 grain critical defense the critical defense 115s 124 grain federal punch. Federal 124 punch. Totally fine. 147 grain custom Hornady loads. Custom 147 XTPs brass case. Let's see how we do. Doesn't matter. and 148 grain hard cast choice ammunition, which is stated as being bear loads. Plus P, bear defense hard cast, let's go. Double action, because that's what we do. It doesn't matter, like if it's plus P or whatever, it does not matter, it's the same. 
And if you look at the brass ejection in all four instances, it's roughly the same with each load, meaning that the amount of energy the shooter's experiencing is about the same. That's very rare amongst a semi-automatic pistol. Like usually you put a stouter load in and the gun wants to jump more. This gun does not care. It will eat anything that you feed it. And kind of building into the ultimate compromise game, the front strap and back strap have good checkering. However, the grip panel on the side is basically smooth. Now, normally if you watch a lot of my videos, you know that I get a little bit upset if there's not good texture right there, but it kind of cuts both ways because if there's good texture kind of along the side of the grip, it's gonna tear up your stomach when you carry. This gun is super smooth, but because the gun doesn't lift very much because of the rotating action of the barrel, I don't feel like I'm giving away a lot of grip traction. I don't feel like I need it to control this gun. And to that point, the gun is super stable at speed, even without the grip traction on the side. It's crazy. So is the gun perfect? Well, no, obviously not. No gun is perfect, but the negatives this gun have, I'm more than willing to live with. First and foremost is scarcity. This gun is pretty scarce. They don't make very many of them. So that kind of sucks because you can't get one if you can't buy it. And if you can buy it, they cost a bunch of money. Now the PX4 has been in circulation as like a global law enforcement pistol for a long time. So there is plenty of support for the PX4. So that's not so much an issue, but in America, like we just ignored it. We just didn't think it was cool. It absolutely keeps up with other guns that cost about the same to where it doesn't really offend me greatly to the point where I bought it a present in the form of a holster and it has become my carry gun. It is just an amazing gun. I'm telling you, we're talking about negatives and it's hard to stay negative. So some other things that I found kind of annoying about the pistol, the process of putting on the back strap, and you can see I have the large back strap installed. It's kind of a bear to do. Watch a video on YouTube about it. I'm not gonna show you here but that's kind of annoying. The field stripping of the pistol and how kind of the recoil spring assembly sits on the rotating barrel is a little bit fiddly and if you're not used to it, it takes some learning to get used to. And the stealth decockers don't provide amazing traction. It again takes some getting used to, but you do get used to them. And then once you don't need them, they're completely out of the way. So I end up just using both sides of it, which a bunch of people are immediately going to be offended because there's only one way to use decockers apparently and the whole pistol forum community gets upset if you don't do that. I see you guys. And for my pistol forum friends, here's a short montage of me decocking the pistol incorrectly in your eyes a bunch of times. So this has become my carry gun. Eventually Langdon's going to ask for this gun back and I'm going to say to them, here is a check because I'm not sending it back. I'm going to buy this gun. Ultimately the 2011 is my favorite platform, the single action only platform, but for carry, it's just, you do compromise a lot on that particular platform. This platform feels like I'm not giving anything up. It feels like I'm keeping everything. In fact, this gun almost shoots like a five inch 2011, which sounds absolutely absurd to say, but I'm telling you, that's very much my experience with the gun. Is this gun going to have kind of a second renaissance and become popular? Probably not. I, I can't imagine it's going to. We seem to like our cheap striker guns or our super expensive hammer fired guns. And this is kind of somewhere in the middle, but for a very capable, very easy to carry gun, I mean, I almost feel like I need to grow a mustache and roll up the cuffs on my jeans and drink IPAs because it's such a hipster gun, but at the same time, I'm here for it, man. It's an absolutely amazing shooting gun. And what I noticed specifically about it when I was shooting it next to my Langdon Tactical 92 is that you should subscribe so you can see when that video comparison comes out.